Hi, everybody. My name is Jerry Jones. I'm co-owner of Amateur Crews Tallahassee, and this is the other co-owner, Craig McMillan. Together, we've been together for almost 25 years, but today's topic, learn how to interview properly so you can win the opportunity. Winning the opportunity should be your main mission and focus, and learning the company culture and mission before the interview is going to even the play and feel and give you confidence going into the interview. When you go grocery shopping, for example, you don't just go, well, some people go ad hoc, but if you make a list, you're more prepared. So it's very vital. Get information on the company culture and the mission ahead of time so you can feel empowered and confident going into the interview. It's going to even the nerves as well. We all get a little nervous, but if you understand the company culture, their mission, and gain insight, you're going to be more relaxed. And more relaxed professionals do better when they're interviewing. It's just that simple. Be informed. Don't be afraid. Be informed, and you'll be you'll be fluid. It won't. It, it'll go really well for you. Absolutely. And then the five P principle, right? Prior planning prevents poor performance. If you just do that and you put your heart into it, and try not to wing it. You'll win most times out of not. You will win. But let's talk about questions to ask the interviewer, right? You're going to do your due diligence. You're going to get on here and you're going to research all this stuff. But what are some really good questions you can ask? Well, the first one is, is how long have you been here? What keeps you here in the organization? What do you think? Where did you come from? Start a two-way dialogue. Because once you start the two-way dialogue, all of a sudden you're talking, the nerves are gone, the butterflies are out of your belly, and now we're starting to get some information because you want to try to gain insight from the other half of the table, so there's a two-way dialogue, not a one-way dialogue, where they're just blasting with questions and you're trying to answer them. But that's a good start. Another great question, what would be the expectations of me on a daily basis? What are you looking for from me that I have that maybe others don't have? What is it that attracts you to me? Find out, because there may be something in your resume that you don't realize that they see that they need. The other piece will be is your experiences, right? Ask them, you know, what is keeping you up at night right now? What is the burning thing right now that's got everybody getting gray hair like I have or losing their hair like I have and that you can come in and apply it? Because once you start hearing the real answers of what's going on, you're getting some solid intel now that says, hey, look, they've got issues. I can help them. Now I just became a possible commodity and I can do this. But also you got to regurgitate back out what they're asking and then be able to talk about your experiences along the way that says, you know what, I was in this role before. We've had this problem. I did this. Here's what I did. But those are just some, just a couple of small snippets, but it's a good start. And very important, guys, going into the interview, do your research on the people you're going to be interviewing with. The interviewing team is the people that you need to learn about. It's so important. Find those commonalities. Are you in trade groups or various groups, uh, mutual groups? It's important. Know about those people. You can even use uh, LinkedIn and other vital tools that will help you uh, engage with those professionals that you're going to be interacting with. And it's just, again, I use the words common sense. You've got to know who you're interviewing with. Look for commonalities. Maybe you guys work at the same company previously. Wow, wouldn't that be, be a good icebreaker if you could talk about previous work experience? So vital. Know the people you're going to be meeting. So LinkedIn is the tool right now. Everybody talks about LinkedIn. I don't know if I haven't traveled any place that I don't hear LinkedIn out of somebody's <laughs> lips. Okay, great. It's a wonderful tool. It's got a lot of information out there, but how do you use it? Well, first off, start looking at the people in the company. Who's there? Just like Craig just said, you may have be talking to somebody that you work with at the same company, but a different division. Now you've got some commonalities. Second, look at your backgrounds. Where did they come from? What did they do? What is their education? How does it align with yours? Did you go to the same school? Do you have the same degrees? Look at that stuff. Because when you do that, now all of a sudden you're gaining insight as to what's going on. And you should be looking at the executive. You should be looking at the mid-level folks. You know, and another key thing to be looking at, look at the turnover inside that LinkedIn with the companies. Is somebody here every two years and leaving? What's going on? Because you can look at people that used to be there too. If there's some turnover inside there, then what's going on? Is there something happening in the company that I need to be aware of? That's why this is open. But 
LinkedIn is a powerful, powerful tool to gain insight into the person you're going to speak to. Absolutely. And don't forget, we all know this. Go to the website. Every company has a website. Now, some of the websites may be a little stale, but go to the website, research the company, be in the know. A lot of times an interviewer on the interview team is going to ask you, have you researched our company? It's a favorite question. So, yes, I have. I've been to your website. Matter of fact, the video you guys just put up was so inspiring. Research that website, guys. Another tool that you can go to is Glassdoor. You know, I think Glassdoor has its place. I think it's good. But if somebody wants to bark about the company and don't sign your name to it, then I don't put a lot of validity into it. Secondly, I don't know a lot of executives or mid-level, senior-level people that put their Glassdoor reviews on there. Typically, what I see in Glassdoor is from the hourly workforce, which is a key component, because when you're listening to the hourly folks or the folks on the floor doing the job that you're creating, and they're barking, then you need to figure out what's going on there. And you need to kind of look at you know, throw out the really bad and throw out the really good and get into the meat if there's enough there. Um, seldom when I'm doing searches and candidates say I went to the glass door, there might be less than six people on there that talked about the particular company. Well, that's not a really good representation. So, yeah, use it, look at it, put some stock into it, but don't take it as the uh, information source of what you're fixing to walk into it. Another great source, guys, uh, YouTube. A lot of companies are using YouTube now more than ever. We know that YouTube is a very important tool for marketing. Go to YouTube, see it live. Hear the color commentary, if you will. So don't forget YouTube. And then the last one, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, if you're a Facebooker or an Insta, you know, Instagram user and you're a big social media person, you know, a couple things come to mind really fast. And this is... Good advice for anybody, anybody, I don't care who you are. Clean up your garbage. Don't put stuff out there that's going to be negative. Um, I get free speech, but unfortunately, when we do searches, the first thing we go look at is your Facebook page. Company will do too. Clients do too. I can tell you confident. I can tell you with pure confidence that I've had hiring authorities say, I looked at your Facebook page, I'm not interested. So Take that for what it is, do what you want with it, but I can assure you, if you're putting out pretty rough content and it's not very popular, then chances are high you're not gonna get a look or you might get a look after they interviewed you and liked you and then they go to your page and look and then they say no. So take it for what that's worth. Absolutely. And when Jerry and I get a lot, Craig, Jerry, what kind of questions should I ask in the interview? Consult with Jerry and I, reach out to us, we can give you more. I wanna give you one of my favorites. The interviews come to a close or it's coming to a close. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, now that we've talked, are there any concerns on your part that I wouldn't be efficient in this role? So key and vital. I can't tell you how many times I've had the interviewing team come back and say, Craig, they asked one of the most brilliant questions at the end. We were able to expound. It opened up more dialogue. We gained more insight on that professional and it helped us make our decision. So that's a favorite one. And again, reach out to us. We can give you a lot of good questions to use to win that offer because at the end of the day, we're here to win an offer that you can accept or turn down. What we don't want is no offer. Or the opportunity to find out why I didn't get the offer. That's why you exactly. asked that question. Nobody should walk away with not asking the question, what concerns do you have that I can't be effective in this role? Because if you get nothing, then you maybe are going to get an offer <laughs> right. or right, right. you're not going to get an offer because they're not going to tell you anyway because you didn't get planned. So remember the 5P principle. But that's those are great tidbits. Those are great nuggets that you can hang on to. And like Craig said, call us, reach out to us, email us, text us, whatever. We answer all of it and we'll help you any way we can. And guys, let's talk about how you build a relationship, a strong relationship, a trusting relationship with your recruiters. You've got to exchange commitments with your recruiter. They're your spokesperson. They're representing your name, your brand. They're your advocate, your champion. They're going in for you, representing your interests. So you share commitments with your recruiter. Please meet those commitments. Be prompt. Be precise. Be receptive to phone calls, text messages, emails. Return them in a timely manner. 
a recruiter, us, we're out there on the front line for you, representing your interests. I've said that again. So help us help you. It's so, so important that you form that trusting relationship uh, with your recruiters. I agree. I couldn't have said it any better. There you have it. We hope you enjoy it. Win the interview. And win it. We're here for you. 